Hey guys, it's J19 brought to you in our video, and today we're going to do something a little bit special. I got a guest here with me, uh, Ari, a pop star. Uh, you guys saw, uh, heard him before in uh, my other podcast in the past. And today's wonderful episode is the first ever Final Fantasy 16 podcast. So we're going to talk, talk about the three trailers we saw, what we uh, anticipate for the Game Awards for, I mean, well, next month. It might be the Game Awards, I think. What we expect to see there for another trailer, a release date, potential pre-orders going live. We're going to talk about the characters, the story, the music, and of course the gameplay. What we want to see, what we like about it, what we don't like about it, what we don't want to see in the game. And our overall overall hype and anticipation for this game. And uh, we'll go from there. So with that said, let's talk about how... We came across Final Fantasy 16. Um, for me, I'll go first. Uh, for me, I saw a uh, a concept art floating around. It was it was a castle. It had uh, a figure look like a main character, but you couldn't really hardly see him. But you saw like a drake or a dragon, like a a drake floating right next to him. And I go, what is this? Like, what is this teaser here? Like. Because nobody knew what it was. And a lot of people speculated. They go, could this be a Final Fantasy game? Because it looks so like fantasy. Like the castles, the crystal, and the drake, and the main character with a sword. So it's like, that was my first exposure to Final Fantasy XVI. Um, definitely, um, definitely was like, piqued my interest. It's like, Final Fantasy sixteen is already being talked about. Like, speculated. And then, uh, of course... We got that PlayStation event. Um, we talked about uh, where Final Fantasy 16 was going to be there, and like everybody's like, "Whoa!" Like Final Fantasy 16 has a chance to actually being shown off. It was like rumored. It was like leaked. Like a lot of insiders were saying, "Yeah, Final Fantasy 16 is going to be shown off at the PlayStation future PlayStation event." And so like everybody's like, "Whoa!" It's like. Hang on a second. It's like, could this be real? So that was my first exposure to Final Fantasy 16, just to get started. So how did you find out about Final Fantasy 16? Uh, I started on the uh, older games a long time ago, and I was just looking for the next game after uh, Final Fantasy 15. And then I think you shared something uh, in the uh, Discord. Yeah. And then the... Uh, the event happened with uh, Sony, and that's where I saw it. Yeah, I remember I did. It, that crossed my mind. I did post a uh, the thing. Is like it's from Sony, and it talked about like the place future of PlayStation. And it talked about like what potentially could be there, and it talked about like uh, first, you know, first party games, of course, and it had like third, like big major third party games, like. And who would have thought that? The start of the PlayStation event, of course, they had a little rundown of, like, the, they had two PlayStation events uh, that year in 2020. They had one earlier in the year, and then they had one in September, um, which, by the way, like, nobody saw it coming that right after the introduction, they went right straight to a, uh, a like, campfire scene, like, in the eyes of, of this character. And one it flat, one it like uh, zo oh, yeah. zoomed out, yeah. and everybody's like, "That is a Final Fantasy looking Final Fantasy character." Like this is this Final Fantasy sixteen. A lot of people are mistaken. Could this be the next patch for Final Fantasy fourteen? But like, like I don't remember Sony like being invested in like the Final Fantasy fourteen like marketing. So it's like a lot of people saying this has got to be Final Fantasy sixteen, and like it just internet blew up. And people were going nuts. And the trailer, like, showed off, like, some gameplay, a little bit, like, story hints. And it's, like, people's, like, going nuts over the combat. It's, like, wait a minute. This looks, like, just, like, Devil May Cry 5. Like, what the hell? Like, what is going on? Like, this looks insane. Like, people are just... And then, of course, you had the other side of the realm where people just, like, making fun of the game because they said, this don't look like a PlayStation 5 game. Like, the visuals, like, the textures are not, like the highest quality and like a lot of people it's like this is supposed to be a PlayStation 5 exclusive but what people don't realize at the very beginning before they showed Clive they showed a little text it said 
it's running, you know, basically being shown off on PC, emulating the PS5 experience. So it's like, they're being honest about it. It's like, hey, we're not quite there yet. Like, this game ain't on PS5 yet. It's like the PC's emulating the PS5 experience. So, and even Yoshi P came out in like a statement, like an interview type of thing. And even he wasn't pleased with the way the trailer looked because they was kind of rushed. Like Sony's like, hey, uh, if you got something, we need it. We need, we, you know, this is a hype train for PlayStation 5. Do you have anything worth showing? And like Yoshi P and his team busted the butts. Like the marketing team got together and they was able to put a trailer together. And what a trailer. And the trailer to me really sold me on getting a PS5. Like I go, I need a PS5 for this game. This game looked great. Even though I wasn't around to watch it live. And I was like, I had people message me and, and tagging me in Discord. And like, dude, like, you got to see this. Like, Final Fantasy 16, like, trailer got shown. I was like, shh. It's like, I know, I know, I know. I, I, I want to be home, but I'm out and about. It's like, I want to watch it so bad. <laughs> so it's like, that was my experience with the, the first trailer. And, like, it got me hyped for Final Fantasy 16. Even though it was just, it was a four-minute trailer. But, like, it's just showing enough. It's like, wow, what a review. Like. A review trailer is never, like, four minutes long, in my opinion. Like, most teasers or, or review trailers, like, maybe 30 seconds to a minute long. But this was four juicy minutes of Final Fantasy 16. So, what was your first imp uh, impressions of Final Fantasy 16? What was your reaction when Final Fantasy 16 popped up for the first time? Like, right off the bat. You still there? Uh, yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. Uh, honestly, I don't even know how to really describe it. I'm sure uh, you remember though. I was going nuts. Yeah, I remember that because it was almost it, it it was almost it was almost like the time when I bought the uh, console for the first time. I went, I went nuts. Yeah, <laughs> like I was just like mind blown how like how like yeah. and even even then that trailer like even though it's not as polished as the future trailers which we'll get to um but the game still showed me like it still had like ps5 like visuals to it like some of the visuals in that game is like wow this actually looks good like it looks better than final fantasy 15 like as people don't really remember, 15 does look good, but if you, like, even compare, like, the Final Fantasy 16 first trailer to um, the Awakening, the Awakening trailer, I think that's what it's called. If you compare that to, like, Final Fantasy 15, you can definitely see differences, for sure. Um, but, yeah, we're definitely hyped for that trailer. And, like, then we got the, then we got information saying, hey, uh, we're going to have a website. For Final Fantasy 16. And we had to wait until the end of October. And it said. After that they said. We got more information to come in 2021. And of course you guys know. What happened there. Um, we waited in all 2021. And finally like the last. Just the last final few days of December. We got a. Message from Yoshi P. And you can tell by his writing. When he typed that out. And the PR. You know. They translated it, but it can tell that it hit him a little hard because he promised the fans that he would have information about, you know, to show off more Final Fantasy 16. And, of course, with COVID and lockdown still going on across the world, you guys know that Final Fantasy 16 got delayed for a half a year. So, finally, in 2022, we got to the... Dominus trailer at the state of play, which, by the way, that state of play was by far the best state of play that Sony's put together where they're showing off, like, a few games. I'm not talking about, like, a, a state of play focused, like, God of War, Horizon, or The Last of Us Part Two or Ghost of Tsushima. I'm talking about, like, regular state of plays where they show, like, about 10 to 15 games, about a minute or two trailers, and that state of play was nuts, like, that Final Fantasy 16 trailer, when it dropped, the Dominus trailer, even though it's like just over two minutes long, 
it you can tell that it was looked significantly better and you can tell the team is working hard for for the game and making it as polished as possible. And uh to me that trailer even blew my mind even more. Like the music, the 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 summons, the icons and seeing a little bit more of the characters and like I was like, wow, this this looks great. Like that got me hooked even more. Like that became one of my most anticipated games to be honest, because I knew that once I saw the date, it says summer 2023, that felt like a gut punch. Like, I was, like, so excited, so hyped, and then once I saw summer 2023, it just felt like Chris uh, Chris Redfield took me as, like, a boulder in Resident Evil 5 and just punched me right in the gut. I just, it's just gut punch. I was like, oh. As I thought, with the PR speech and all that, I thought that Final Fantasy 16 was actually going to come out probably like fall or possibly like the holidays of 2022 but that wasn't the case so Ari what was your impressions of the Dominus trailer when I dropped at the state of play wasn't that the one where they showed off all the different uh creatures and shit yeah they're showing off the the icons they showed right. off uh Benedicta it was the uh, Garuda. They showed off Garuda and the uh, Icon fights, the Kaju fights, the people are calling it. Um, for the first time. That was yeah. the first time we saw that type of gameplay. And we yeah. saw gameplay of Clive as well for the first time with UI. I don't, I don't know. I was just looking at the uh, the trailer and I was just seeing like what they could do with the uh, the game, knowing that that was going to be in there. And that's basically the um, uh, the uh, limit break from uh, Final Fantasy VII. That's basically what they are. So, right. knowing that there's going to be some cool shit to do with that, and I, I want to see more. For sure, I uh, I definitely want to see more of that. Um, yeah, that the UI out first. I was like, you know what, that UI doesn't look good i mean for like the setting of the game but i grown accustomed to it like it took me a little bit to get used to it but after a while i was like you know what this will work you gotta have the hud the the ui it's gotta pop out a little bit like you gotta be able to like pay attention so the greens and the reds and like everything's like everything's going on in the gameplay like a lot of these like words that come up and numbers it's like it's like wow it's like like counter dodge and like perfect dodges and like it's like the gameplay to me like it definitely showed off like the battle director for Devil May Cry 5 like you can tell that he was having fun he goes you guys want a combat that's close to Devil May Cry 5 but with Final Fantasy 7 Spark I mean Final Fantasy Spark for like combat the gameplay it's like let me have some fun with us let me roll with it for a while you can tell in that gameplay footage of like Clive and that he was having fun. Mm-hmm. And like the Kaju fights, if you really pay attention to Kaju fights, what other game does it kind of remind you of? He also worked on Marvel vs. Capcom 2 fighting game. And that's basically what the Kaju fights are. Like, there's different type of fights, but it looked like everybody's like, wait a minute, why does this look like similar to like fighting game? Like, you got the two health bars and you got the two, you know, the two characters, one on each side, like, battling it out to see who's the better fighter. It's like, definitely has uh, hints, nods, and, and, like, references from, like, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, which I thought was great. <laughs> but seeing the different characters, that definitely got me hyped, excited. Interesting. Um, but, uh, like, I was like, man, i like to see a little bit more characters. The only thing I haven't seen yet is I want to see if, like, Clive talk more because the interviews that we got after the second trailer, like, they started talking about Clive and, and talking about how, like, his character and, like, how, like, that's, like, one of the best characters they ever written. Like, the 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 writers that written the character for Clive, like, they said that even though they worked on, like, Final Fantasy fourteen, they said, this is, like, by far the best character I ever written. Like, th- like that's how hyped they are for Clive, and like I want to see, like, see Clive as I hope in the second trailer. Is like, okay, first trailer saw him fighting a little bit. Of course, we got the updated UI and and the and the gameplay the way it looked. 
because they had over about over a year to work on it. And uh, I was like, man, I'd like to hear Clive speak a little bit more. I wanted to know, know more about his character. But that trailer set me up for for the future. I was like, okay. And he said, we got more. We got another trailer coming this fall. And it's going to be story focused. Now, let's move on to the big and juicy trailer that everybody went nuts over. The story trailer. The one that's, that just got everybody's attention. Like, a lot of people who were on the fence about the game were actually won over. A lot of people are still on the fence. Some people are not interested because it's Final Fantasy, which which is fine. Everybody's got their own preference. But I called it from a while back. I said, watch. I said, this story trailer, ambition trailer, as it's called, it's going to sell a lot of people. It's going to get people's attention. Like, this trailer, they went all out. They went all out. They want to showcase, like, the world building, the character, the gameplay. And just like this entrenched story, give us a little like just a taste of all the kingdoms that we're gonna be possibly fighting, uh, possibly like going through. Like that trailer got me so hyped. It's like it's easily my most anticipated game. Like I voted for the Game Awards. That's, I hope it wins the most anticipated game, which of course it probably won't. But definitely. Definitely a game I'm like so hyped for. It's like I gotta get it. I gotta get the pre-order. I want to get the collector's edition. That's what that ambition trailer did for me. Like it just sold me on everything. Um, now I do have a little bit of honestly mark for it, but what I do have a little bit of questions for it. Like how will the kaiju fights feel? Like I know they're supposed to be big epic fights, but that's the only like that's the only thing I'm kind of just like. If I get my hands on it, maybe I know we're going to get a demo still closer to launch. Yoshi P and his team has reconfirmed that demo is coming. I hopefully get like maybe a little snippet of a Kaju fight. That'd be nice, but probably not. I still got a little worries about how that's going to handle as a big ambitious part of the game. But other than that, this game sold. Me. So what is your thoughts on the ambition trailer? Um, speak. Of that act, if you to about uh, two minutes on that trailer, it should be sending. Come on, I just sent it to you so you don't have to find it. If Discord actually, yeah, I think it sent it. If you yeah. skip to about uh, two minutes, you, you see somebody show up with uh, longer hair. Now, the thing about that is, I know you tried uh, Final Fantasy 14, but you didn't go through much of it. That's actually the guy that's fighting in every trailer for the game. Are you talking about the guy that's so, coming from the smoke? Yes. he's a, He fights in every trailer of uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, like... I when, don't when know I what, see... he has, what he has to do with this game, but that's crazy. Yeah, like, a lot of people, when they saw that, they thought that was the that was the marketing uh, warrior. Well, I don't know if he's a warrior. Like, I don't know what his role is in Final Fantasy XIV, but, like, he's always on, in, like, almost every single trailer. He's, like... Because when I first time saw a Final Fantasy fourteen trailer, I saw him. Like mm -hmm. I saw that guy. Like I was like, is he I, like the main I, character? I or couldn't something? hear you. You can't hear me. Sorry, chat. Um can you hear me now? I can. I don't know what the hell that was. I don't know. Sorry if I uh made a whole bunch of commotion there. Um Yeah, I don't know. This uh this mic has been have a little issues, I think. Um, it's been cut out. No, that was lag. That was... Oh, busted my mic. Anyway. You hear, uh, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. When I, when I couldn't hear you, that was, uh, that was lag. Okay. That was just lag. All right, guys. Don't mind me banging on my mic, but... Okay, um, where were we? Oh, yeah, we was talking about the... Uh, yeah, the guy from Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, when I saw him, I'm like, is that him? But I know exactly who that guy is. I know his name. Um, it's on the uh, website. So I looked. Uh, after that, after that, I went right straight to the website. They, they said they updated it. And they put down um, two more characters. Uh, Benedicta was already on there. Hugo was already on there. Uh, new names we got is Dion. 
and then we got Barnabas. Dion and Barnabas are both uh, dominants. Okay, they're dominants of icons that they that they use. Um, if you go on the website, you'll know that Dion is the guy from. He kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy fifteen. Uh, he was the guy with the blonde hair and the white, like the white outfit. Like he was really mm-hmm. fancy looking. He wasn't the emperor of. Uh, I forgot. I forgot what that empire name is, but Final Fantasy fifteen. But whatever. Um, that guy looks kind of similar. Uh, his name is Dion. He's the. Uh, I think he's the prince of uh, Sam Breck. Uh, which is the Empire, um, which is like, it looks like it's going to be like the like the evil corporation, not evil corporation, but the evil kingdom that's trying to take over every, every area. They call it like, we got to take over the storm, um, whatever it's called. Uh, but the guy in there that's standing in front of the Empire, Emperor, um, his name is Dion, and he is the dominant of Bahamut. He's the dominant Bahamut. Uh, the guy from Final Fantasy fourteen, the guy that peered out of the, out of the smoke, he's from yeah. Walud. Uh, he is the dominant of Odin. His name is Barnabas. Uh, so his character is very interesting because you can tell that him and Dion are both like, they're, you can tell like they got different motives. Like you can tell by their facial expression, like one's like out the, prove himself, like, you know, prove that, you know, he's, like, you know, the dominant, like, he's, like, the big, he's, like, the strongest warrior, and, and stuff like that, because Odin, and stuff like that, he's, like, the best swordsman. Um, Barnabas, not Barnabas, but Dion, if you look in the trailer, uh, he looks, you can tell by his, uh, body, uh, language, that he's not buying it. He's not buying it with the, uh, with what the emperor is saying, like he's conflicted, so he's having some conflicting things going on. So that's one of the things I'm like really interested in is all the dominants are gonna go through some transformations. They're gonna go through some character growth, um, some situations in in their lives. That I'm like, I can't wait for this. Like, even like Clive, like Clive's gonna have party members. He's gonna be like traveling with a bunch of people. It's not just Clive. It's roam around by himself he's gonna have a party he's gonna have a party where it's ai controlled you don't have to worry about them i don't think you gotta like manage them they fight on their own you just gotta concentrate on being clive uh yoshi p and them figured that's probably the best way to handle an action game is just have the player focus on clive he'll have his party members or ai control they can handle themselves and uh you can just concentrate and just pull off some sick you know, combos and, and just handle, like, switching between the icons, his abilities, and stuff like that. Um, so I'm definitely interested in mo- seeing more about Dion. Um, Hugo is the uh, dominant for Titan. He's that big guy who looks like uh, um, Jack from uh, Stranger yeah, of Paradise. Yeah. Everybody keeps making a meme about him. You go, hey, that's Jack from Stranger of Paradise. He's saying chaos. <laughs> but um, Benedicta, as you can probably tell from the trailer, she is Garuda. I really like her, like, uh, her, her mid, her mid form, where she has wings and stuff like that. I thought that was sick. The gameplay, I don't know how they did it, but the gameplay got even more epic. Like, this trailer sold me on the gameplay even more. The icon battles look even more sick. Like, the kaiju fights. And I was just like, man, what a trailer. Like, just see all the different kingdoms and how, what they talk about, what they're like, what their goals are. And just like knowing that Joshua is like blessed by like the crystals and stuff like that with uh, the king talking to him in like the beginning stages of the trailer. I just thought that was a great story trailer. Like, it got me more immersed in the world and the, in the, uh, the storytelling. Of the characters, the kingdoms, and stuff like that. I just said, what a trailer. It's like, whoa. Like, then they talk about, hopefully this trailer satisfied your needs until the next big review. Like, what else you guys got to show us? Like, what's the big, huge review of you guys got in store for us? Like, this story trailer was like, 
so fire. Like, it just, it got me hype. Like, beyond, beyond, like, my wildest dreams. So, what does this trailer do for you? Like, when you f first saw it? Honestly, it just, it, it, uh, it just showed more of the game because I was already sold on the game from, like, everything else. Right. I just I just had to get another uh, console because I didn't have that at the time. Right. And the good news about Final Fantasy 16, for those of you who probably don't know, if you do, uh, it's cool too. Um, also, I do realize that, uh, that uh, Sony had a little a little tiny trailer just set, you know, just uh, I guess they celebrated like the two year anniversary of PlayStation Five, so they put put together. Just a trailer um, with uh, a video with, like, showing off some upcoming games. They didn't show off, like, Spider-Man 2, I don't think. But it showed off for Spoken. They showed off, like, I think they had, like, God of War, Riding Rock. Just, like, a few of the games that are kind of just new-ish. Maybe just, like, this year. I think it had Horizon Forbidden West. Um, stuff like that. But they also showed for Spoken. And uh, I know I'm getting off track here. But they shown a uh, exclusive deal on that. It's, like two years like the exclusivity deal for console exclusive for the playstation 5 is going to end in 2025 and everybody's like wait what like that's got a two-year exclu console exclusive the play ps5 like what like but then they show final fantasy 16 and on the bottom it says it's console exclusive for six months so everybody's like wait sony only bought a uh, exclusive deal for six months like this is huge. Like, a lot of people are really excited for this. And I saw that as like, yep, it's coming to PC soon. Um, sooner than people think, which is great. I don't know about Xbox port. I don't know if, you know, between Square and uh, Microsoft, it, but. It needs to go to Xbox because there's only been, what, two games? There's only been two games that haven't gone there. It'd be stupid if this game didn't go to uh, Xbox over some deal, over some contract. Yeah, I, I think I think 16 should come to Microsoft. I mean, probably not Game Pass free. I think Square wants to make some money off this deal, unless Microsoft offers them a lot of money. Because Square knows that 16 is going to sell, right? So, like, I don't think it's going to, like, if it comes to Xbox, I don't think it's going to come to, like, Game Pass right away. I mean, Xbox, Microsoft likes to do that, put games on day one on Game Pass. But they also got to uh, work with the developers, right? The the company that they get the games from. They got to say, okay, uh, we want to put on Game Pass day one for people to play it under the subscription fees. Like, what's what's the highest like what's the offer to do that like how much you how much you want want us to pay to do that so it's up to square but i i would like to see it to come to xbox but it's also it's coming to pc so a lot of people are going to be probably if they got a fancy pc rig they might just say you know what i could just wait six months and just play it then um not me i'm definitely uh so hyped that i want to get the collector's edition for this game like i'm just can't wait just excited um so I know that I talked to you. You also want to get the collector's edition because you're definitely hyped for this game. So it's like exciting times. This trailer here was like definitely the, the pinnacle of like. Now, I will say this. I hope because what's going on is there are like Tom Henderson, uh, Gaming Insider, there's a few other uh, insiders that are talking that. And the Yoshi P, because Yoshi P confirmed this. That he said you will have the release date reveal of Final Fantasy 16 before the end of this year, and now a lot of insiders are saying there's t word going around that pre-orders are going to go live either December 7th or December 8th. I think it's going to be during the Game Awards. I think that Final Fantasy 16 is going to be shown off a trailer. I just hope, like I said before, I want to finish my session. I hope. That they don't show off any more of the story. I think the story uh, trailer was good enough. Because I'm starting to like watch a little bit of Final Fantasy 16 videos. And people said. And a lot of people say. Hey uh, don't give us any more story. Because we're starting to figure this game out. Like trying to figure out where the story is going to go. Like so. I know Yoshi P and his team. He liked to just drop a little hints here and there. Like I know 14 he does that. Like he's It's like it sets you up for in the future. Like. 
pay attention, pay attention to this because you might think it don't matter now. Like it's going to matter like soon down the road. So it's like a you know, little nods, little hints for you to say, Hey, pay attention to this character or what's going on here because that's going to happen like down the road. That's going to come full, full force. And the trailer, uh, if they show off a trailer, I think it's going to be like a minute or two. They probably show off like, Maybe Clive run around the uh the environments or something like that. Something that's something we haven't seen yet. I think that's like the next big reveal. Um, maybe show him like how he traverses around the world. Maybe we do have like I know we're gonna have chocobos, at least. Um, no vehicles. I know this is like a, a medieval but game. So, got a question though for you. Here's yeah. something to think about. Are we gonna be able to buy them as a mount? Or is it going to be like in uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, where you go up to the uh, merchant and you uh, you rent it and it just takes you where you want to go? Ah, <laughs> uh, that is a good question. It, in that game, you can do both, and I have all of them. I think, I think the way Yoshi P and his team are going to handle the chocobos, it's going to be similar to Final Fantasy fourteen. Um, yeah, but yeah. I think, I think that we're going to build like. Uh, you know, have free roam with the chocobos. I think it's gonna be like kind of like Final Fantasy 15 or Final Fantasy 7, um, not remake, but original. You know, stuff like that where you you can run a chocobo or you can capture a chocobo. I don't know how it's gonna work in 16. I think it's just gonna build go to like the chocobo stables. Of course, we're gonna have them in the in the cities and towns and stuff like that. So like you can travel around the, the locations with chocobos. I think it's gonna be great if they show us like something like that. I'm fine with it. Like just show us something we haven't seen yet. But at the end, we get the release date. And if everything goes according to what's being spoken, I would not be surprised if Ke- Jeff Keighley, at the very end, he says pre-orders for this game is now officially live. Now you guys can go ahead and pre-order the game. And then I think they're gonna end off the show with that. You know, as the last like big update review slash thing and then they're going to go on with the uh the the game of the year award i think that's how they're going to end it i think 16 is a big massive game and sony's going to probably pay big bucks to have that like as one of the big reviews like usually at towards the end of the show they usually have like a big massive review and then or update and then it's like then it goes like the the grand stage of them all the Game of the Year award. So, what do you think is going to happen at the Game Awards? You think pre-orders are going to go live? You think that's just like rumors being spread around that's not true? And if are we going to get a trailer? What, what kind of trailer do you think yeah. we're going to get for a release date? I, I don't know how to describe the trailer other than just look up any of the trailers for like uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, something along those lines I think is what we're going to get. I I don't know how to actually describe uh, describe it. There's gonna be a lot of uh, action in there, for sure. Yeah. It's, there's gonna be something like that, and I do think everything's gonna drop uh, at the event. I don't see why they wouldn't, because uh, there's some games that that do that over a year before the game drops, and this game's yeah. dropping next year. So, for sure, I uh I had to remind people, and they go, "Wow, you're actually right," because. They go, why would Square drop pre-orders like six or seven months before the game's out? I go, you guys got to think back. I know it's been a while. It's been over three years. But think back in E3 2019. Remember how when we had that big Final Fantasy VII remake uh, explosive 20-minute like game sh- gameplay uh, showcase? They had the trailer, T for review, and all that. What did they do at the very end? They had pre-orders, and they showed off all the additions you can pre-order, and it says pre-order now. That was that was in June of 2019, and the game didn't come out until April 2020. So it's like, that's, uh, you know, that's a long time. So it's like six, that's, six or seven that's, months. That's, that's almost time. that's almost a year. <sighs> yeah, it's like 10 months. Like, that's not bad. Like, Square wants to make sure if people want to pre-order a game, they're not going to say, Pre-orders alive. Got a week to save up money if you want the collector edition or whatever edition you want. They're not going to do that. A lot, some some games, you know, there's some games out there that pre-orders go live like about a month before uh, the game launches, maybe two months at most. 
but not Square. Square knows that they they want people to like if they want like the collector's edition or like the, even the deluxe edition. I know they're gonna do that. Um, that's how Square is. Square likes to do multiple editions. They love their collector's edition. They know that Final Fantasy fans out there are going nuts. They want the collector's editions and stuff. They want all these figures and and steel bookcases and all that. Um, yeah. So I think the trailer is gonna be it's gonna be epic. As always, it's going to show off, like, even six months later, well, not six months later, but, like, three months later, we're going to see a more polished game. Like, they've been working on polishing and optimizing this game. I would not be shocked if Final Fan, uh, the Final Fantasy 16 fourth trailer actually runs in, like, the 4K 60 FPS uh, trailer mode. Because a lot of people say, wait a minute, this game only runs in 30 FPS trailer? That's because they're still working on polishing, debugging, and optimization. They still want to, mm-hmm. like, Yoshi P says, we're going to take a year and still work on optimization, polishing, and just debugging. Because he knows, he w- when he releases this game, he wants to make sure this game don't have any issues when it launches. Right? That's how passionate he is about his games. Because I don't remember, like, I don't remember Final Fantasy fourteen having a bad launch. Other than... 1.0 before Yoshi P took over and, and with his team and done uh, All Realm Reborn, you know. Like I don't remember 14 having like launch issues other than like M Walker. Everybody's trying to get an M Walker, and it's like it was almost impossible for like the first few hours. Like if you was waiting in line, a queue of like 10,000, you get down to about 3,000, and a lot of people's like, man, come on, really? A timed out error? It's like. Oh, Guess I'll try later. <laughs> you, mean, you mean the first few months? Yeah, first few months, yeah. Um, the Not the first few hours, trust me. I got on that game day one, and the first week or two it was good, and then everybody from every game said, I'm done with this game, and they moved on to that game, and the servers, dude, they, they, they ran out of digital game codes. Yeah, which that never happens. Like that, <laughs> That's a rare feat. Yeah, yeah, a game like that. I don't even think WoW <laughs> even done that. No, no, it hasn't. So, like, Final Fantasy fourteen is, like, the biggest MMO out there. Like, you can have your you can have your WoWs and all that. Which are, uh, people probably mm-hmm. still love those games. I'm not, I'm not trying to cut them down because Final Fantasy fourteen has grown so much that it's become one of the most beloved MMOs out there, uh, which is... Not insane anymore. It's not shocking anymore. It's it's proven fact. That's why a lot of people are really hyped up about Final Fantasy 16. And I would not be shocked if Final Fantasy 16 sells extremely well within the first day or so of launch. Like, I think a lot of people from the Final Fantasy 14 universe are paying attention to Final Fantasy 16 because it's Yoshi P, it's Takai. It's, it's majority of the devs that worked on Heaven's Ward. And what did Yoshi P say back then when he says, I'm not working on Final Fantasy 16, but if I was working on the next mainline game, he says it'd be a little bit closer to like what Heaven's Ward was. And I would go back, I would want to go back to the roots of Final Fantasy, you know, like medieval stuff. Like he wants to go back and make like an old school Final Fantasy game, not gameplay wise, but like. The story, the setting, and stuff like that. The 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 theme per se. And guess what? Yeah, they were working on Final Fantasy sixteen, and it's going according to what he said in that interview years ago. <laughs> so it's like definitely definitely exciting stuff. Um. Okay, so let's move on to okay. We can talk about the music. I think the music in the and the trailers so far are incredible, especially like the second trailer. Like it was like the choir was singing the names of the icons, and it's like wow, it's like that was goosebumps. Like that was like you can tell like just watching videos and people just say, "Yep, that's the masterpiece work of so- Sokin." Sokin, it's like, uh, guess who he looked up to? Obu Amatsu. Uh. I think Amasu, I don't know, Ubu, because uh, 
what he who was he? He was a composer for Final, a lot of the Final, older Final Fantasy games, like mostly Final Fantasy Seven. And he looked up to him. That was his mentor. He wanted to follow his lead, and you can tell where he got like a lot of his love for music from because it shows in these trailers. It's unbelievably good. I cannot wait to hear more of the soundtrack. Um, because last we knew that. Uh, he's Stoken is still working hard on the soundtrack. It's not done yet. And Yoshi P is like, if you want to interview him, that's fine. But wait until they're done with the soundtrack, please. <laughs> he's like, please, he want to interview him. He's like, if you want to interview him, fine. But let him finish the soundtrack first. Let him finish up the work. <laughs> so you're, you're used to the uh, Stoken's uh, musical work. Um, the soundtrack for Final Fantasy XIV. So you can tell me all about his work, if you want to. Honestly, it's been a while since I've listened to any of them, but from uh, what I remember, they're all really, really good. Yeah, I I listen to a few of the soundtracks, and, and they're amazing for Final Fantasy fourteen, and it's carrying over to Final Fantasy sixteen. Like, I think the music for Final Fantasy sixteen is probably gonna be another soundtrack. That I'm definitely gonna listen to a lot, along with Final Fantasy VII, because just what I'm hearing so far is like, oh, it's like wow, it's like mind blowing. It's it's blowing me away. Um, the gameplay, of course, like Devil May Cry Five ish with Final Fantasy like sparks, like oh, so good. Like Devil May Cry Five was a fantastic game. Gameplay was phenomenal. I'm so happy that. Square Enix hired him. They said, hey, uh, Square, uh, Capcom, we're going to take that guy and put him on our Final Fantasy 16 project because we want to make sure that this action-focused gameplay is going to hit people in the right fields. And I think that was a perfect fit for this game, um, the way the gameplay looks so far. And I can't wait to get my hands on this game. Like, the gameplay, the story, the music, just... Everything so far. Um, so, moving on to the main thing. So, let's talk about the last two things. Uh, what do you think of the characters so far that we know about, that you saw from the three trailers? Uh, I just want to see, like, I forget what his name is, but he's the dude sitting in the chair. Uh, I want to see... Yeah, I want to see everything between him and everybody else. See how that goes, because, uh, I don't know, that just seems interesting. Yeah, for sure. Like, Clive and Hugo are, like, they're going to be going at it, like, seems like a couple of times at least. And, like, the final part of that trailer where it's like, now die! It's like, you can tell that they are really f fired up, and, like, they're, they're willing to kill each other for, like, the sake of their Whatever, whatever is at stake there. And it's like, that got me goosebumps. Like, holy crap, like, this fight's going to be nuts. Between Hugo and Clive one-on-one. -on -one. Like, it's going to be great. Like, so Hugo is definitely an interesting character. Because you can tell that he's, he cares about his people. And, like, you can tell that, like, during some of the trailers, it's like, you can tell that he's having some, like, inner struggles. Like, even Benedicta, like, you can tell, like, the, uh, people call that the sex scene between, uh, Benedicta and Barnabas. Everybody thought that was Clive in the bedroom with her. Like, they have, like, no clothes on. No, that's, uh, Barnabas. Odin is actually sleeping with Garuda. Whoever, you know, who would have thought that I'd be saying that on this podcast, right? <laughs> but you can tell, like, her expression, like, she's, like, she's worried about Barnabas. Maybe Barnabas is, like, talking about his feelings and stuff like that after, like, they had their moment together. And, and you can tell that she's worried about him. Like, she's got struggles of her own. Like, she's, like, one shot, like, shows, like, she's in tears. Like, something's happened. Like, she's got blood on her face. And that's when she's, like, transforming. Like, that's just, like, that's nuts. Like, I want to learn more about those characters. And, like... 
Dion. Dion's really interesting character. You can tell by his body language, like you said before. He's just like, like he's got a lot of inner inner conflicts. That's like one of the things I like about this game so far. That I see, like all these characters are going through some kind of struggle, conflict, and we're gonna learn more about these characters. Like when we get this game in our hands, and there are some characters that they haven't even shown off yet. There's a character called uh, Byron that we don't know about, but he's an interesting character according to one of the devs. He's like, I wish I could talk about Byron because ask me after the game comes out. Ha ha ha. He goes, if I talked about Byron, it'd be a spoiler, and I don't want to do that. But he's an interesting character. We have not seen who Byron is. Um, there's a few characters that they mentioned not name, but like there's a bard, I guess, like from not like you know, Skyrim Bard, you know, they they sing they sing about the stories and stuff like that or you know, they they do their thing. But like he's gonna be taught he's gonna be like he's like Clive's personal bard, like telling about his journey and stuff like that. I thought, wow, that's that's gonna be um And of course we uh can't we can't forget about Jill um, I think Jill is the dominant for Shiva. Um, a lot of people are taking that from the third trailer. Um, she's an interesting character. Like she was from the north, like north, north uh, abandoned lands, and she's been taken in by the uh, Ros uh, the, the kingdom of Ros Rosaria. She's like basically like family to like Clive and Joshua, and I thought that was pretty pretty neat. Um, story for that so her role is like she's like captured and like one scene like Clive and his like crew of men like they like they rescue her you can tell that like the bigger guy in the, in the shot towards the beginning of the trailer um, he's like carrying Jill she looks like she's wore out like, like beat up because later on in the trailer like she gets kicked and like like knocked over and stuff like that like those those people are not nice to Jill and it looks like she gets mad later on. She like starts transforming into Shiva, and she starts like ripping these guards apart. I thought that was really sick. Um, so she's an interesting character. Um, Joshua, of course, we know about Joshua. He's the dominant of Phoenix. He, w he wished that his brother, his uh, his more braver brother, older brother Clive, would be the dominant. But unfortunately, he was chosen. But Clive is able to have. Uh, a, a small blessing of Phoenix, so he he does have Phoenix moves at the start. Um, there is another thing that the devs have talked about is there is a second playable character, and the they mentioned that, and the interviewer, the interviewee, was talking to uh, one of the devs, and it's like, oh, so is it kind of close, like Rex from Final Fantasy XII, where you start off with, you start off with like a, an older brother of uh, Vaughn or you know something like that and they said well you know it's something similar you know they didn't, they didn't like come out confirm it's gonna be close to that but they said in the early stages of the game we will be controlling a second playable character so Clive isn't the only playable character in this game which that's got me intrigued who is that playable character? We do not know. We do not know. So I'm really interested in that. And of course, if you pay attention, like the couple, the last couple, well, the, I think the second trailer showed off, like, well, the first and second trailer showed off uh, Targo. Targo is the, uh, that wolf puppy you saw in the first trailer. Like, he's so cute and cuddly and fluffy. Oh, and, and the first trailer for, uh, Final Fantasy 16. Yes. His name is Torgo. Yeah. He is your he is your mm. uh, buddy. He's your buddy system for Clyde. Mm. Mm. And if you if you pause the second trailer at a certain point, I I posted it in the Final Fantasy 16 Discord channel. Uh, it shows Torgo all grown up, and he's actually fighting with you. He's actually on the battlefield with Clive, battling as he's a lot older. So. He's going to be traveling with Clive as Clive goes through these time skips. Because a lot of you probably don't know this, but Clive 
it's going to go through three different time skips. He, we're going to be playing as, as him in a 15-year-old, in his 20s, and then we're going to end the game in his 30s. And that's, that's going to be interesting because we get to see how the world transforms throughout his life. Like, so, it's not going to be the same. The game is going to start off a lot like uh, the last trailer for uh, Hogwarts Legacy where you're just walking in a uh, building then most likely. The yeah. game is going to start. I feel like it's going to start with you just walk with you just walking around and not doing much, and the game starting off slow. Eh, it could. Uh, it depends on Yoshi P and how they want to like. I hope it ain't like a like a Roy really slugfest. I hope they uh, learn their lesson from uh, All Realm Reborn, um, because a lot of people confirm like a lot of people agree with me that that's like the most boring part of Final Fantasy XIV. It's like, A Realm Reborn, like, the story's fine, but it's just, it's sluggish to get through. I just hope that 16 ain't gonna have, like, the same starting point. I hope 16 starts off, like, like, kind of like a Final Fantasy XII, where you get to play as a second character. Maybe you get to play him in the future. Maybe this character be from, like, the future, like, a future battle, and, like, then it goes back to, like, Clive, 15 years old, or maybe maybe play as a character from the past and find out what happened in the past, and then that leads up to Clive being 15 years old and you're playing as Clive. Like that's, I hope it starts off a little bit faster. But if you're gonna go like a route of like a route reborn where it's kind of like a slow start, I hope it don't last too long because like I want I want the game to like pick up the pace a little bit like i know a lot of games are you know they start off like small you know they they get you like you know they just get you like you know step by step get you into the into the game the mechanics and stuff that which is fine you gotta have a tutorial that's probably what's gonna happen we're gonna have like a tutorial mission where it's kind of like a slow start uh, you're gonna go through battles and and like gameplay mechanics where you learn how to run and like what's the buttons do how to access your menus and stuff like that but you know that I think it's going to have, like, a slow start for that. But I just hope that it's not going to be, like, a long, like, sluggish type of feel. For like, if the game starts off like that, which it will. It starts off with a tutorial and all that, which, normal for any game, like, you're walking. Like, you're learning how to turn, how to run, how to, like, talk to NPCs and, and stuff like that. Like, the basic stuff, right? So, like. I expect that I I do expect that start type type of start. Um, hopefully, it's not like a sluggish, like slow motion start where it's just like it eases you. Of like the first half hour is like just a, you know, you just learn the mechanics. Like, okay, first five ten minutes you learn mechanics. It's like then you just start pick up the pace. Maybe a little at a time you'll you'll learn a little bit more like skill sets like. Uh, Skill trees, which have been confirmed for this game. Um, you can customize any place all you want. Um, a lot of people are happy about this. Um, it's kind of got like a uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake aspect and Elden Ring, where you can respect. Um, you can, like, if you don't like the like the abilities and skills that you've chosen for Clive and you want to change up your play style halfway through the game or even part partially through the game, you can reset any time. And you get all your all your special you know skill points back. And you can choose any play style you want. Like, let's say you want Clive to be a tank, but like halfway through, you go, you know what? I want him to focus on, you know, being more like a, a phoenix. You know, a phoenix gameplay. Or I want him to be fast like a Garuda. You know, doing wind attacks. Or maybe I want him to be like a a big, you know, sluggish type of fight with like Titan with a Titan's fist. You know, stuff like that. You know, you, you got options, which I'm, like, really, really super happy about for that. Um, so what is your overall um, impressions over that? Over what exactly? Sorry. About, like, the skill trees. You're able to, like, you can change, like, your skills throughout the game. Like, you can respect, basically, like, an Elden Ring. Like, you don't like a certain build that you have for Clive. You can go ahead and respect any time. And like choose a different play style, stuff like that. I got three words for you. What's that? 
Devil May Cry. <laughs> Devil May Cry. There we go. You you know exactly where they got the idea. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. And it's just like, oh, I can't wait. Shit. I can't wait. It's just like, <laughs> the gameplay is going to be fun. The casual fights I'm excited for, even though I, you know, it's, it's like with every game, I do have worries about the gameplay. Like, gameplay is number one for me. Story and characters can be second. Music, music is just a bonus. You know, it's a bonus thing. You know, it just helps, makes it more immersive and stuff like that. But gameplay is number one. I'm always going to have my worries with gameplay. Um, I did, hey, I had the same worries about Final Fantasy VII Remake. Am I going to like the gameplay? Is the gameplay going to suck for me? Am I going to like this hybrid system? I loved it. The demo sold me. This game, the gameplay looks fantastic. It looks fun. The kaiju fights and stuff. Once I, like, it's one of my little worries I have. But once I get the game in my hands, it might be the greatest thing I ever experienced. Who knows? But definitely interested in the gameplay aspects first. The story and the characters look like they're going to be phenomenal. Um, speaking of story, that's the final thing we got to get into. What is this story going to? What is this story going to go? Where is this? What's the story trying to tell us? That's the meat and potatoes for us to finish out this podcast. Everything we learn from all three. Um, trailers the story trailer and stuff like that where what is this game trying to teach and where is this game gonna go do you have any ideas no no not at all not at all not at all i think what i'm gathering <laughs> is we're gonna get we're gonna get like uh we're gonna learn more about the icons, number one, they're the focus of the story. I think the dominants are going to go through some conflict about because each dominant is treated differently in each kingdom. Either they're going to be like they're slaves, they're praised, or used for war. Um, I think every single one of them is going to go through some um, conflictions, and Clyde's going to have to help them like, resolve those conflictions, I think. And a lot of them are going to butt heads with Clive. So I, I, that's why he's going to fight him. That's why he's going to, like, re- retrieve, uh, not retrieve, but receive the blessings from these icons where he can do, like, their special abilities and stuff like that and, like, transform. Now, where's the story going to go? I think when Rosaria gets taken over or attacked by the Empire, um, some brick, um, with the, uh, Dragoons, by the way, uh, which are led by who? Dion. Dion is the uh, leader or the um, commander for the Dragoons. He trains them, he commands them, and stuff like that. So the Dragoons, like the the the, the magic users and stuff that come in the Rosaria's kingdom, <laughs> I think, I think the shadow, the the hooded figure. The reason why they haven't really shown his face, or the character's face, and he's like like mysterious, I think that's going to be a character that's going to play a significant role. Is that's going to be Ifri? That's the dominant for Ifri. Um, I think that the way the story's going to go is child of fate. I think that's Clive. Clive is a child of fate. Um, whatever that means. Um, and, and the guy that was speaking in the end of the second trailer, it's like, like, oh, child of fate. He's like staring at Clive. And then right after that, it's like, Ifrit. Like, there's two Ifrits fighting. I think one of them is the dark icon. The other one is light icon. I think Clive, even though, um, the dev said that he's not really a dominant per se. I think that he's linked to Ifrit, at least to the other Ifrit. There's going to be two Ifrits. I think Clive is going to be able to transform into the second Ifrit. And the guy, I think the guy, the guy that's really speaking in that weird tone, it's like, oh, rise ye child of fate, Ifrit. I think he's the main uh, antagonist. 
I think he's the main baddie. I I think he's, to be honest, I think that that whoever that character is, we don't know who he is. I think that he's the mastermind behind everything. I think of all the kingdoms and and the dominance and the icons, I think that he is the the main key to why everything like the the system of things per se. I think Clive re uh, receiving all of, of the powers of the icon, like, it's going to be a war of the icons. And I think that between all the battles, all the conflictions that Clive's going to go through and just witnessing things, and I would not be surprised if, like, I watched some videos and I kind of agree with them. I think that yeah. during the time skips of Clive, I would not be shocked. If one of the scenes has where Clive is in the middle of a battle and right before his next time skip, I think Torgal is going to get killed. Torgal and his Chocobo are going to get killed off. And that's going to send Clive into like a rage, like for revenge, for, for, his, for his buddy, for his Chocobo, not just for those two. By things that send him on a on a like a revenge, it's a revenge story for Clive eventually, and I think that's gonna go on into his. I think it's gonna be the final time skip where he goes in his thirties, and like Clive is like he's looking for revenge. He wants answers, and he's and he just wants he wants whoever's in charge, whoever's behind everything, to pay for what what they've done. No matter. If it, even if it's the last thing that he does, that's how Clive is in the f end of the first trailer. Like he's he is not happy. He he wants revenge. He wants to stop. He wants to stop this vicious cycle, because once a dominant gets used up in the the final trailer, I mean not final trailer, but the third trailer we saw, when the uh, dominants get used to a point, it, it's costing them their lives. They actually turn into stone. Like. There's a guy laying on the bed. He's like, like kind of like a pale gray color. Like he's he's dead. Like because he's like a dominant. He like he died from being used as a as a tool for whatever kingdom, whatever he was being used for. Because it it cost them their life force basically. And that's that's gonna be mind blowing because you got you're like a ticking you're a ticking time bomb. You know, like a like a nuclear weapon, per se. That's what a lot of people are saying in their videos. Like, and it makes sense because like the dominants have like nuclear power. And that's the icon, and it's being used like for war, for like for just being a tool. And it's like, you know, my my icon is stronger than yours. Like, if you want to try to send your icon, I'll send mine, and we'll see who's the who's the better kingdom. Like. It's like a it's like a WWE uh, promo match, like a promo for a big big match, like a big fight. So it's like I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this game goes, and I think I would not be surprised if this game has some moments, and this game was just it hits you so hard that like it's it's a it's an emotional roller coaster ride, like Yoshi P said. It's like it's a roller coaster ride of like, it's like get ready, like soon the game will be in your hands, and it's like it feels like yeah, it'll be in our hands about a year later. <laughs> Not quite soon, but I'm excited. I, I I'm excited to see what what happens in the story. Like, there's a lot going on, and like even the final, the final, like more uh, Merle. If you look at it closely, it has an icon that has not been revealed yet in a trailer. You know what icon that is? Hmm. Leviathan. Leviathan is an icon in this game. Oh, yeah. So, like, who is the dominant for icon for Leviathan? We don't know. Like, there's a lot we don't know. And, like, there is, like, even though this, uh, we have these three trailers, we're going to get another one and like, shoot, less than two weeks already, we get in our trailer, and, like, 
we haven't seen this this game yet. Like we haven't seen everything of this game. This game is gonna be probably the most ambitious, massive Final Fantasy game we had in quite a while. In quite a while. So it's like I'm ready. I can't wait to land the uh, collector's edition. Now I will say this: I hope the collector's edition. I hope the figure is like the uh, '30s Clive and his badass outfit. You know the one. You know one that he looks badass. Like, he's been through shit. Like, he's ready to, like, he's ready to kill somebody and, like, get his revenge type of look. Like, he looks, he looks like a big-time Final Fantasy um, main character. Like, he's he's powerful. He's got the icons on his side. He's, he's ready to get his revenge. Like, that's, I hope that's, like, the statue, the figurine we get. Um, if it's not, Clive, hopefully something epic. Um, the way I uh, just I know we'll get we'll get the game, get the steel book case, get probably a um art book. You probably get the mini soundtrack, maybe a full soundtrack. Who knows? Who knows how they're gonna handle it? Um, other than that, I don't think there's. I don't know if it's gonna be like uh, DLCs for pre-order, like. I don't think so. Final Fantasy VII Remake had that where you can get like the DLC summons. I don't think we get anything of that nature. I think it's just going to be like, you want the collector edition, you get physical item. I don't think there's going to be any like DLC. Now, unless you want to do like a cosmetic type of thing where Clive gets like a special like cosmetic outfit, maybe. I mean, I could see that happen. Um, other than that, I don't see much of anything for like the digital. Uh, download of that nature. So, what do you think? What do you want from the collector's edition? Uh, I guess just the same stuff from like a standard uh, collector's edition, the statue and all the other shit. All right, awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, it's uh, definitely looking looking forward to the game awards. I think. Um, I don't think. Like, Final Fantasy 16, like, a lot of people are saying that Sony could just do, like, a PlayStation blog on the 7th and just say, here, Final Fantasy 16 pre-orders are live. Like, go ahead and secure your pre-orders. But I don't think that's the best way to go for, like, the most anticipated, like, one of the most anticipated games, for like, especially for a PS5 game. I think if Sony was smart, I don't know if you agree with me with this, you're going to have, like, millions of people tune in in the Game Awards. What better way to show off Final Fantasy 16 again and have a release date that's going to come out probably around June? I think in probably June 16th, probably in the middle of June, I think that works. Like, just after the E3 show, I think that works great. Um, if you want to release it just before the E3 showcase, that's fine too. Um... I think it's going to be a little bit closer to like the start of the summer. I think Yoshi P and his team want to get this game out um, before uh, like July-ish because later on that summer, what is Yoshi P and his team going to focus on? 7.0 patch for Final Fantasy XIV. And they're going to start ramping up the marketing for that, ramping up production on that. Um, I don't think they want to be like, Still working on Final Fantasy 16, getting it ready for release, like middle to late summer. I don't see that happening. I think that Final Fantasy 16 starts the summer holiday, the summer season off with a bang. Square Enix loves to do that. They they love to have that moment. I think Yoshi P would be happy with that. I think that's plenty of time for them to get this game. You know, the game's finished. Just get it optimized, debug it the best of their abilities and just get ready for it. I think at June, I think June fits for Final Fantasy 16. Just right, right in the start of the summer. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's get it. What do you think? What do you think the release date's going to be for Final Fantasy 16? Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a guess. We, uh, we already know it's the summer of next year, assuming nothing happens. Yep. Um, yep. I'm going to go ahead and say June 15th. June 15th? 
that'll be on a Thursday. <laughs> but that's also if it's Thursday for us, it could be Friday for them because they're far ahead. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, because they're they're. I think they're well. It depends on the area they're in over there. Yeah, but they're anywhere from twelve to like fifteen hours a- ahead of us. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I just think you and I both got the same idea. Just middle of June, we're close to the start of summer. It's close enough, right? Look at Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion. It said winter of this year. Like it's coming out day before uh, the official winter season starts. So it's like, it makes sense. It makes sense. Get get sixteen out. Get it ready. Get people's get in people's hands. Give them at least you know a few weeks to play it. Couple weeks, couple three weeks, especially for like the Final Fantasy fourteen fans and like the Final Fantasy like Yoshi P fans. Like they're really excited about sixteen. Like get that going, and then everybody just starts getting hyped, excited for Final Fantasy fourteen with the seven point oh patch, which is gonna be exciting yeah. times for the Final Fantasy fourteen fans. Here soon. I think later this week I'm gonna go back to getting on that game since I got the uh, console. Yeah, for sure. Um, if Ooh. things work out, I'm still like dealing with situation. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough go. Um, we'll find out Monday, but it's not looking good at all for our situation. But like, we'll see how things go. But I'm definitely, if everything goes well, like eventually, like if everything settles down. I do eventually want to give Final Fantasy fourteen another chance, another shot. But uh, I have to I have to like get my mindset going to like if I'm gonna play Final Fantasy fourteen, I'm gonna have to invest into it. You know? You, you don't need to because they're at least in the beginning, there's two different uh launchers and they don't tell you this. And I think they don't tell you this because they're trying to get you to get the wrong uh launcher. If you get the wrong one, you actually have to get the uh, expansion uh day one ah. but if you get the uh the launcher that you're supposed to get you can actually get on the game for free they just don't tell you there's two different ones they tell you that you can get on the game uh for free they just don't tell you there's two different launchers and one of them's the wrong one. Oh, okay yeah it's like on the if i re-download the one on ps5 and continue my character i am under the free trial and so like yeah i can play up to level 60 and all the way through Heaven's Ward for free. So that's that's a lot of content to get myself in, you know, get myself through then definitely have to like invest my time into that game. I have to focus on like you know, put my money into the, you know, like the latest expansion and pay you know, pay a monthly s- subscription and get through the game and enjoy it and get find out why people are going nuts over Final Fantasy 14 because I know the story, like, I don't know what happens in the story, but I know that the story really gets ramped up, like, after a Realm Reborn, like, Pio said, you gotta get through Realm Reborn because once you do, your world is gonna, like, open up. So, you're, yeah, like, it, you're gonna really enjoy Final Fantasy 14 after that. If you've, if you've seen the trailer for uh, Endwalker, how they're on the uh, moon, yeah, you actually go there. <laughs> Well, yeah, I figured that. Like, you, it, they don't just show it off. You actually go there, and I, I, that's like, I don't know why that's such a difficult thing anymore. They'll show something in the uh, trailer, and then you just never go there, and it's like, what the hell? <laughs> huh, weird. Yeah, so it's like all the. Tra- I I watched a couple of trailers for. Actually, I watched probably eh, two or three trailers of Final Fantasy fourteen in the past, and just the trailers are hyped. And just like Final Fantasy Sixteen's Fallen Suit, like, and everything they show in the trailers are actually in the game. Like, they're not gonna say, "Well, here's this." It's you know, here's the thing in the trailer. And I'm saying, get the final product. It's not in the game. Like a lot of trailers are. Like some games, like you see it in the trailer, you expect it to be in the game. It's like not there in the final product. Like they cut out the last moment or something went a little haywire on that. Um, but yeah, like definitely can see like. The, the love from Final Fantasy fourteen poured into sixteen and the reason why I like sixteen as well because I looked at all the developers like you got developers from fourteen you know Heaven's Ward 
um, Yoshi P and Takai, and you got Soken, of course, um, the legends. But you also got people that worked on, like, the characters, like Final Fantasy X, or, like, the the setting and stuff like that. You got people that worked on Final Fantasy XII, and, like, what are, those, what are those games to me? They are on my top five list for best Final Fantasy games. So it's like, I was like, no wonder why 16 is grabbing my attention. Because I see some Final Fantasy 12 and Final Fantasy 10, you know, some uh, little love in, in this game too. Like, I could, I can tell by some of the character designs, like some of the, like, the work that's being put into it. Like, yeah, I can definitely tell why I'm hyped for this game because it's got, people that worked on the games I love in the past, along with the gameplay I love from Devil May Cry 5. So it's like the perfect combo. Like, let's go. You know, let's go. So it's like, I'm ready for it. You know, I just land the pre-order. hope we just got to be on top of the game. And uh, yeah, so with that said, guys, I think that's it for Final Fantasy 16. I apologize earlier for like the banging on the mic. Hopefully that didn't like, break your ears um with that said if if you guys uh if you guys see me like get a little frustrated there just like maybe just go past it about five seconds um with that said hope you guys enjoy final fantasy 16 podcast it's been fun it's been uh a good one and uh once we get another trailer um i will break do a breakdown video of that trailer and get my thoughts on it so look forward to that um and I'll let you guys know that I might even do a breakdown video of the pre-orders and see see what they have to offer. So if you guys look forward to those videos, you know, you guys want to do like, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell notification, stay notified and go live, or upload my next video. Of course, I'll have links in the description below for my Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. You guys know what to do. I appreciate you guys a ton. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. Hopefully the audio sounds fine. Um, we did a test run. Everything sounded good. Um, I know it's kind of loud on my end because I'm like with a speaker in that, but it's just sound good on you guys' end. Hope you guys enjoy this one. And if you guys want more 16, drop a like, subscribe, and uh, share with a friend. And Ari, thank you uh, for stopping by. It's been fun. Um, hopefully, do another Final Fantasy 16 podcast. If we have more information, we might do another one, or we might just do a podcast after we play and beat the game. I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, uh, any closing thoughts before I end this? Uh, mm, I don't know. Other than I just, I want to get the game. <laughs> same here. Same here. Uh, yeah. Let me know. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Final Fantasy 16 so far. Are you guys hyped for it? Are you guys still on the fence? Are you guys gonna pre-order it? I know I am. I'm gonna try to land mm. the uh, the collector's edition. And uh, with that said, hope you guys enjoy this video. Have a safe day. Be nice to each other. And uh, love you guys. Thank you guys for love and support as always. And God bless. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Take care.